With The Amazing Spider-Man 2 about to hit theaters, Sony has entered a new phase of their ad campaign for the film, playing up the villains. In fact, this is a long-term strategy for the Spidey cinematic universe that Sony is building. And in the latest issue of Entertainment Weekly, they make it clear that one of the things that this sequel does is set up their Sinister Six movie. So that's how they got Jamie Foxx to sign on for Second Stringer Electro, as this henchman is getting his own franchise. Sure, I'll have to share, but if Maleficent also scores big this summer, it looks like everyone will be telling their agents they want to play the villain rather than the hero. So, speaking of agents, today let's see if we can cast the Sinister Six movie. Now, we already have Fox as Electro, plus while the Green Goblin wasn't a founding member of the Sinister Six in the comics, considering that the movie seems to reimagine them as an Oscorp initiative, and he's played by hot newcomer Dane DeHaan, expect good old Gobby front and center. We've also already got Felicia Hardy in the mix, aka Black Cat, portrayed by Felicity Jones. Plus, word is here, she's Harry's girlfriend. Sure, Black Cat has never been a member of the Sinister Six on paper, but with a whole movie on the line, it needs that token female member, and with Spidey's rogues gallery, there's not a lot of ladies to choose from. Although, this does call into question Black Cat's anti-hero status in the comics. Paul Giamatti's Rhino might also get an invite, but he wasn't a founding member either. Although, again, is the Sinister Six movie the carrot that got Giamatti to sign on for what so far seems like almost a cameo? Plus, Rice Evans could come back as the Lizard, and the sequel, small spoiler, does feature the office's B.J. Novak as Alistair Smythe, whose family infamously created the Spider Slayers in the comics. Will Oscorp reassign him to at least assist their Sinister Six program? But let's get to the fun part, New Blood. With Dahan, Jones, and Novak, we can see that Sony is definitely targeting a specific age group for their main players. So while in the comics, Spider-Man has always had a surprisingly older cast of supporting characters, even Aunt May, it looks like on film he'll be dealing with weirdos his own age, which for Andrew Garfield is 30. Of course, Fox and Giamatti are exceptions, bigger names lending this franchise some weight, but interestingly they are the same age, 46, so that's about as high as we should go with our own casting net. To start, we'll turn our attention to Dr. Octopus, the original founder of the Sinister Six. Sam Raimi drafted Alfred Molina for his trilogy, but maybe we can make our Doc Ock a little cooler. One idea is Billy Bob Thornton, who's no stranger to bad haircuts. He's even sporting one on his new FX series Fargo, which just might make him relevant again. He's a bit on the older side, though, at 58, so perhaps Paul Dano? Dano has impressed before as a bitter yet self-righteous outsider in There Will Be Blood, and also as someone who's as much a victim as his own victims in Prisoners. But again, I said let's make him cool, right? So what about Dano's Prisoners co-star, Jake Gyllenhaal? He's got the right coloring, intensity, and basic look, but cooler. Next, the Vulture is supposed to be Spidey's oldest foe, so in this new cinematic universe, we're talking in his 50s. How about Woody Harrelson? He's a hot commodity right now off of True Detective, and he's even got that bird-like look. Plus, he brings a comedic yet sinister and totally professional energy to the table, a la Jamie Foxx. Another choice is Tim Roth, who isn't likely to be reprising his role as Emil Blonsky, aka The Abomination, anytime soon. He's also got that vulture look and the kind of offbeat artistic credibility for cheap that these crowded franchises love. Then for Craven the Hunter, you might be tempted to focus on his brawn, but that's just going to get you a WWE or MMA fighter hoping to turn actor, and that never really works out, does it? So instead, let's focus on the Russian nobility angle. If his stint in Alice in Wonderland 2 doesn't work out, Sasha Baron Cohen could be a very interesting choice. Plus, his height would help make up for his slighter build. And if you've seen the Grand Budapest Hotel, you know that Adrian Brody makes for a surprisingly menacing and dangerous villain. Or Sony could lose the Russian angle and reach out to the Latino market by having Craven hail from South America, where there's also quite a bit of game. How about Oscar Isaac, the Guatemalan actor who turned quite a few heads with his turn in Inside Lewin Davis? As for Sandman, here Sam Raimi went with Thomas Hayden Church, and likewise, we want someone a little rough around the edges. Keeping with that magic number of 46, a la Fox and Giamatti, how about Josh Brolin or Aaron Eckhart? Brolin practically specializes in playing broken men who aim high only to find they're out of their depth, while the best thing in I, Frankenstein was Eckhart's command of his action sequences. Finally, we turn to Mysterio, a tough role to cast as his head is often hidden. But what actor is going to go along with that, except maybe Michael Fassbender? Well, if Frank works, perhaps Mysterio will keep his fishbowl, but either way we need someone theatrical. What about Alfie Allen from Game of Thrones, who's proven wonderfully slimy and expressive as Theon Greyjoy? 
Casey Affleck also did a great turn as a minor player trying to make it in the big leagues back with the assassination of Jesse James by the coward Robert Ford. He lurked in the shadows there, so why not again for Spidey? Or Sony could go with an Asian star, as that's a huge box office market these days. Plus, the theatricality of, say, Japanese game shows could play right in with a reimagined Mysterio. So do you like any of these casting choices for Sony's Sinister Six movie? If not, who would you suggest? Be sure to share your thoughts down below. I'm Grace Randolph, and this has been a Movie Bite. You can watch more right now.